Okay, we're about to tell you guys tonight one of the most amazing, amazing, amazing stories that I've ever heard in my life. And really it's sources from Bereshit Rabbah, Midrash Rabbah, a lot of different sources around the Torah. Okay, you ready? Like this. There was Rav Zemira. He was a great rabbi. And he was walking one day. You have to know, Gemara Mesech Etzukah and different Mesech Torah, they speak about the Petach of Gehinam. What does it mean, Petach of Gehinam? Like the opening of Gehinam, where if you look at this place in this world, I'm talking about. In this world, if you look, it could be you'll see the opening of the Gehinam. You'll see smoke, you'll see this, you'll see that. So he was walking one day, and he saw, he saw smoke coming out of a area. It was in the mountain called Ararat. And in that mountain, like, you know, imagine you have like the huge Grand Canyon and there's different parts. There was another park called Oni. And he went ahead and he said, this looks very weird over here. Why is there a, why is there a smoke coming out of this? He looks inside. He can't really tell. One Arab guy comes to him. He says, Zamira, come over here. You want to see something cool? Happens to be the Arab knew exactly where he's going. He walks, starts walking, walking, walking. And he shows him this place where a lot of smoke starts bubbling up. He's like, whoa, what's going on over here? And the Arab left. He was still, he looked around a little bit more. It says that he got exhausted a little bit. And he like fell asleep. In his dream, there's a guy in his dream, there's a guy, he's seeing that he's getting burnt in flames. They took the guy and he's screaming, he's running away. Help, 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 help. Nobody's helping him. Somebody takes him, chucks him in a fire and he's just like, blow, I don't know what happens to the guy, he like burns. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the dream, this guy who just got finished getting burnt gets up after he got burnt, gets up and he talks to Rav Zamira, says to him, help me, help me, help me. And in the dream, Rav Zamira tells him, who are you? What did you do in your lifetime that you deserve such crazy punishments? And he says, Rabbi, you don't understand every day that he's telling Rav Zamira every day they burn him three times a day in the, in the day and three times in the night. And it's crazy suffering and I can't handle it anymore. Please save me. He says, did you leave anything behind in this world? Anything? He says, oh, I left a son, but I don't know. I never sent him to, to yeshiva. I don't, I don't know. I never sent him anywhere to learn anything. He says, you left a son. Where did you live? I told him I lived in this place. And you were the butcher there? I was the butcher there. He says, okay. He says, I don't know. I'll try to help you in this. He wakes up from his dream. Wakes up from his dream. He goes, he says, where's the butcher? Where's the butcher go? Where's the butcher? The butcher said he lived here in this place. I'm going to go check out this place, what I could do. See if I could find his uh, son. He goes ahead and he says to the people, do you guys know there was a butcher once upon a time? He died, there's that. He says, uh, yeah, but who cares about that guy? That guy was at our shop. We don't even, we don't even want to talk about his name. But please, please tell me. Does, do you know his son? Oh, that guy. Eh. He's, uh, you can find him maybe over there playing a ball or something like that. And he goes there. He says, looks, looks, looks. And he finally figured out who the boy was. Did your father pass away recently? Yeah. Was your father the butcher? Yeah. Come over here, kid. What's your name? It says his name. My name is Nochum. Nochum. What we're going to do is, I'm going to start teaching you. He starts teaching him. First, he started teaching him like Psukim. Then, Kriyat Shema. Then prayers. Then learning. This boy ended up becoming such a Tamil Hacham. His name is 
Rav Nachum Apikuli. That's his name, Rav Nachum Apikuli. And Chazal say, why Pikuli? Kapakak Pilila. But what happened? Rav Zemira fell asleep again. And he had another dream. And who came to him in the dream again? This guy that was burning in gain now. And he tells him, Rabbi! You saved me! You saved me! You saved me! He says, you're not understanding. You're not understanding. When I, when my son learned the first pasuk, just one pasuk of a learning, already, it was again, it was still three times a day, whatever, things like that, but, but, it was much less fire. When he started saying Shema Yisrael, it wasn't three times a day, it was random sometimes a day. When he was learning every day, regularly, every day learning Torah, they stopped the punishment in Gehenna. And, and, when they started calling him Rebbe, like a rabbi, they put him up amongst the tzaddikim in Gan Eden, amongst the tzaddikim. And he said, and when he started giving shiurei Torah, chidushim, they started crowning him, giving him crowns. And what I, you see what Torah could do, woman's vote could do. A person has to understand a child that you bring to this world, every single mitzvah that this child does for the rest of his life, you get a schut for. Do you understand that? It's a wild thing. Any mitzvah that a person's son or daughter does for eternity, you will be getting rewarded for it ever and ever. A person passes away, he left behind, automatically packages are coming up. Oh, what happened? And they put, they're rising him here, they're rising him there. What happened? I, I, I thought after this world, that's it, no more. How can I keep on going higher and higher? He says, wait one second, one second. You left behind the Sadiq, Yosef, Moshe, I don't know, Esther, Sarah, Rivka, Bacheva, you know? Who knows? You left Sadiqot over here. You left, you left, you know what that is? Every mitzvah that they're doing, you're getting packages. That's what it is. A person has to understand that. Of course, I could do, this guy, I want to explain very, very clearly. Because now a person hears this, he might say, oh, very good, I'm good. I'll do all the sins in the world. Oh, my kid's a sadiq. Ah, Rabbi, don't bother me with siniyut. Please, no siniyut. I can wear what I want. My son sadiq is learning Torah all day and night. Eh... He must have had a zehut to do that, you understand? Even this rasha that was uh, burning three times a day and three times a night, he must have had a zehut. He must have done something good in his life. It doesn't go like that. You don't just, uh, oh, b- bypass the whole entire system of Gehina because you have a tzaddik of a son. No, a person has to get retribution from his avarot, they do. But the lesson that we're learning from the story is that you get zehuyot from the children. From the children. But therefore it's the mission, of course, of the father. And especially of the mother. Who's home most of the day, tell me? What was the day with the children? Who's, who's telling me? The mother. Now the mother. You have to teach them. In the morning, the, 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 the guy, the husband, right away, he's running to Shi'ur, Torah, to the, to the Bet Knesset, to this, to that. What do the mothers have to do? They have to go ahead. Oh, whatever you call your, your daughter, Rachel, come over here. Uh, you know, Sarah, come on. Did you do the Tadai Daim today? In the morning, you have to do the Tadai Daim. And tell them in a pleasant way. So we'll come. And then you buy her your own special Tadai Daim. I bought you the nice mini pink cup from the Neti Lai Daim from the school. And I bought you, wrote your name on it. You see your name? Oh, Emily. Wow, you see? Wow, so good. Thank you, mommy. Tomorrow, she gets excited. Oh, I can't wait to do it tomorrow. And you tell did you do one down here in the Fanecha this morning? Sometimes the mother doesn't do it, but at least tell the kid, you know? All right? <laughs> Uh, but tell the kid, did you do Modani the Fanechai this morning? And they say, say with me, Modani the Fanechai. Wow, you did it? I have something special for you. A mitzvah note. And then you go to school, give it to your mora, and you go to your mora, you're so excited. 
Or you give me, or you give him a lollipop. This is for you, special lollipop. Of course, you can do it every day. He's gonna get a cabin, whatever. I don't know. But once in a while, you give you give you get your lollipop. You know, I'm gonna make a chart with stars. You know, what happened to me. I'll tell you honestly. When I was a little kid, I was in fifth. I remember fifth grade, fourth grade. I remember my mother put me a whole thing. And I was able to have an Oreo cookie if I did my homework, you know? I'll never forget that. I was like, I was so excited. I did my homework. Okay, Ma, I get the Oreo. Whatever it is, dude, just whatever it may be. Each mother has to do or each father has to do their own thing in order to motivate their child. And, and guess what? It's your responsibility as a mother, as a parent to train them. I try every night, I try to read my uh, my, my kids, uh, maybe a rabbi story before they go to sleep. Say Shema. Every time I tell my daughter, did you say thank you Hashem? Say thank you Hashem for one thing today. What do you think Hashem for today? Did you say anything? Oh, she says, it uh, depends also on the age, right? Oh, I thank Hashem that I have eyes. Why? why? Thank Hashem that I have eyes. That what? Oh, that I could see. Thank you Hashem that there's, uh, you know, my daughter that they thank Hashem for the seatbelt so I can put on my seatbelt when I come into the car, you know? Whatever it is. But each to his own. Oh, before he goes to sleep, did you say I love you, Hashem, today? The whole day you didn't say I love you, Hashem. I can't believe you. He gave you a whole day of life and you didn't say I love you, Hashem? Even us, I'm talking about the adults too, you know. Before we work on the kids, let's work on ourselves also. Before you go to sleep, you know, I love you, Hashem. I love you, Hashem. Thank you. Just say I love you, Hashem. Why not? Sometimes you don't want your husband to hear, or the husband doesn't want to hear. What are you doing over there in the shiurim, right? They're thinking crazy. No, what do you mean? I love you, Hashem. You want to say it low, say it in a low voice, whatever it is. But to each his own. Well, this is the way a mother and a father, especially, but a mother, especially a mother, she has to know how to direct the child. The Mahashah brings down, there's a famous, famous for scheme, they bring down that the lady has a sixth scent that a man doesn't have. It's called a binayetera. Something that a man doesn't have, but a lady has, that she could guide the home. She could see, you know, sometimes the, the husband could bug out. Oh! And then the wife's got to calm down. Calm down, honey, honey. If you tell him like this, then he'll listen. Because the mother knows extra in that way of training the kids. And this we have to know. And with this, hopefully, you know, our children turn out well. And of course, this chuyot. Um, uh, is from Hashem. Besides that, the school, the school that you have, if a person has a child, he has to think Hashem, he has to know, Hashem gave you a gift. You, you want to take care of the gift, you got to take care of the gift well. And raise in the right, proper way. And what's the what's a very, very key point for Chinuch? A very, very key point for Chinuch is what? Prayers. You also have to pray to Hashem that your child comes out well. They say about his, his, his how is the, how did you become... He says, if you saw my mother's tehillim all wet, where's it wet from? They thought something spilled on it, there's water, she got cold. What is that? Her tears that she prayed for the Havitz Ha'im, Havitz Ha'im. What, you want just tzaddik, tzaddik, just like that? Just, boop, where's the tzaddik, Hashem, where's my tzaddik? And, gotta pray. You pray hard, you do what you have to do. Hashem, good things happen.